The following is an excerpt from the audiobook of The Gok Turks, written and self-published by Emre E. Yavuz, who also created Khan's Den. In the very last chapter, he goes into detail about his motivation to write the book and recounts his personal experiences of the past few years, something which he normally keeps to himself. For years, I asked myself the same question over and over again. Can you do it? This question was related to my school days, my studies, work. Since preschool, there have been many people who have supported me, and I appreciate them very much. I have been very lucky in life, but there were always doubters, naysayers who questioned my abilities, my talents, and even outright denied me as a person. They couldn't stand my style of writing. It bothered them that I wasn't as loud and annoying as the other school kids. It bothered them even more when I gave a presentation in a seminar at university, leading the discussion with class without explicitly involving the professor. It bothered them that I kept bringing up topics that were not in their syllabus, nor that they had even ever thought about. I could tell you a story or two, especially about my seminars in political science and how certain profs neither understood the concept of professional education, nor bothered to accept opinions other than their own. Perhaps they were also bothered by my origins, or, as they say in Germany, my nose, my literal appearance. However, in adulthood, I realized that it was precisely not my style, my background, my looks, that bothered my teachers and lecturers, but the combination of all of these. At no time did I fit into the image of the typical Turk in Germany. I couldn't be pigeonholed into one of the many categories, as is unfortunately the case in the country where I grew up. But I was never really one of them, either. The name wasn't German enough for that. My name is Emre E. Yavuz, and not Hans Peter Muller. Anyone who knows the meaning of my names will also understand why I actually like them. So why am I telling you this? In short, because it was one of the reasons why I made the Gok Turk book last April. Yes, I wrote about the Celestial Turks out of personal motivation. Admittedly, one should not do such a thing as a graduated political scientist or historian, or at least not reveal it to the reader and keep it to yourself. But since so many stumbling blocks were put in my way immediately after graduation, so that I would eventually lose the desire for a PhD, I simply don't care anymore. Would you, in my shoes? I wanted to obtain a PhD so that I could write books that would be recognized by the academic world. Throughout school, I overcame the ignorance of my teachers, and by the finish line of university all the naysayers of my style of working were practically silent. This was also reflected in the grading of my thesis. Although I had written a master's thesis with extremely controversial content and bold claims, my profs gave it a very good grade. Well, there you go. I had made it. I had finally achieved my goals, graduated and disproved many other academics and their ignorant claims. But the PhD still was not available at the university where I had studied. To make matters worse, 2020 was the year of the pandemic. I am sure that I do not have to lecture any students reading these sentences about the extremely poor communication of the profs with their students. You, the younger people, unfortunately still have to go through hell. At least I don't have to anymore. But then, what was next for me after university? Political science aside, the thought occurred to me that the studying of history had probably been in vain. I was depressed by this thought. Should I have chosen economics as my second subject instead of history? Despite my non-German last name, that would certainly have increased my chances for quicker career advancement. But then a friend gave me the reason to turn the tables. Now it turned out that it was not the study of political science, but of history that should be more important. For me personally, for my new hobby, and perhaps also for my professional career. I had met said friend in a cafe on a cold, rainy November afternoon in 2019, we talked about all and sundry, as we always do once we run into each other. Somehow, we got onto the subject of the Uyghurs in China. He had probably picked up something from the news and asked me, the expert on history, about the background of the Uyghurs. When I told him about it, he learned for the first time that the Uyghurs were actually a Turkic people. As open-minded as he is, he wanted to know more about the Uyghurs and other Turkic peoples. Time ran out and we went our separate ways. But those one or two hours with him in the cafe animated me to start a blog that same evening. On it, I wanted to tell Turkic history, 
to show that it consisted of more than Ottomans on one side and certain Turkic politicians on the other. I wanted to write about things that 99% of all Germans had never ever heard of. No, not made up claims and forged history. As you may have noticed, many of my sources on the Gok Turks were written by Chinese, Byzantines, Persians, Koreans, Tibetans, Sogdians, and even Arabs. The evaluation of these sources was conducted in the 19th and 20th centuries, not only but mainly by European historians, linguists, and archaeologists. From the beginning, it was not a matter of sugarcoating Turkey or Turkic culture for whatever reason. I noticed early on that it was precisely some Turks who were bothered by the Gokturks. Funny, I know. Anywhere I got into conversation with people, at university, at work, at parties, I was confronted with so much ignorance. Not just ignorance, actually, but with a mentality of wanting to remain ignorant. Is that the definition of being ignorant about one's own ignorance? Unfortunately, not everyone was like my said friend. Many simply did not want to expand their horizons. Frankly, though, I had had enough of it, and I found that this ignorance was not something that developed on its own over time, but was caused, and perhaps willfully, brought about by certain media, politicians, businesses, and even academic circles. School systems around the world, of course, played a role in this. Believe me when I tell you that almost none of my knowledge of history comes from my time at a Bavarian high school. Well, apart from some topics like Charlemagne and Nazi Germany, the same old, same old. But then again, these are topics that are chewed over on certain German documentary channels day in and day out. My German readers know what I'm talking about. They are important to know, but history consists of more than just the same three, four topics, right? Right. Well, if many people are not properly told what was right or wrong in history, and above all, there were usually two sides to the same coin, how on earth are they supposed to find out for themselves? By chance? Or is every person credited with retaining curiosity and inquisitiveness to the end of his life, if they ever possessed it at all? A busy, hard-working person in adulthood simply does not have the time or strength to constantly educate themselves. Life consists of enough problems, conflicts to deal with. Under these two auspices, I then put into practice my ideas that had been accumulating in my head for years. There is a group of people who would like to know more about the story but are not well versed in it for example, said friend. And there is the other group of people who simply don't have the time. Both groups didn't need to sacrifice their valuable time for elaborate research and didn't need to wade through dusty, centuries-old books. That's okay, because I would do that for them from now on. Why else had I studied history? Out of boredom? Surely not. I quickly started to publish every blog entry about the Gok Turks in three languages, including English and, of course, Turkish. The advertising I did for my blog on Facebook even brought me over 1,000 followers within a few weeks. The blog was read more by people from Germany, the Facebook posts by people from Turkey, but writing was not enough. Just a month later, I published my first video on YouTube called Rise of the Gok Turks. I knew that the only way to truly understand recent Turkish history, including that of the Ottomans, was to start from the beginning. Now, it's not easy to travel over 1,500 years into the past and then draw parallels to the 20th century. It gets even trickier when you want to draw lessons from history with reference to the current political situation in Turkey. But there are parallels, patterns that keep repeating themselves, and knowledgeable as well as attentive readers and viewers of my works may have already spotted them. So I proceeded to expand my channel on YouTube. But the year 2020 and the wait for the barely attainable PhD at university almost made me give up. I suddenly had the urge to translate Rise of the Gokturks into German out of sheer curiosity to see if it would bring in a few more viewers. Sure enough, suddenly the audience numbers shot up again. I even managed to reach 1,000 subscribers, a milestone for any amateur YouTuber. I had almost given up but my family and my new subscribers stopped me from doing so. Thank the almighty sky. Instead of PhD and the fancy academic world, documentaries and YouTube were now on the agenda. Of course, I do have a job, just in case you were wondering. But it gets really interesting for me when I get to write books like this. 
because in my videos, in my books, I get to really let off steam, let all my talents run wild. I did and continue to do the whole thing as a hobby, not as a full-time job. I simply have too few viewers for that, whereas 25,000 subscribers, as of March 2023, are not few. I'm glad about every single one of them. After the miniseries on the Gokturks, I then published a movie-length documentary in the summer of 2021 that covered the entire history of the first Gokturk Empire, including prehistory, lifestyle, religion, and so on. The book you are reading is a massively expanded version of that film entitled The Gokturks, History, Culture, and Legacy of the First Turkic Empire. The idea of making such a book in the first place had already occurred to me a few years ago, but the high audience figures for the film of which the English version has long since surpassed the German one, by the way, motivated me to work on the book again. Admittedly, I don't have a PhD in my pocket and I don't have the support of the academia, but I have the freedom to write this book the way I like it. And I like to explain complex issues in a way that every ordinary person can understand. If you feel addressed, that's fine. All the better. If you really made so far without any real prior knowledge about the Gokturks, maybe even without any prior knowledge about Turkic history in general, then I congratulate you. I know that the facts of my book, of my videos, can be irritating at times. The story of the Gokturks also gave me a headache at some points. Believe me. Moreover, if time and budget were available, my book could have been a few hundred pages longer, even more comprehensive, so that I could have analyzed the history of the steppe peoples since the Scythians, the rise of the Huns, and the complex migratory movements across Eurasia. I would also then examine the role of the Indo-European peoples in more detail. Think of the potential connection of the Ashina clan with the Indo-European Wusun. On the other hand, writing books is difficult. But it's not the writing part that's so exhausting. At least that's not the case for me. In fact, researching and translating all those ancient Chinese, Korean, Tibetan, Persian, and ancient Greek books was perhaps the most difficult part. But this project is really different. The subject, the style, the goal of this project are not something that many book publishers in this country would like to take up and put on bookstores. Be that as it may, you still manage to read the book I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thus I have reached my goal, and if you were the only person in the world who bought and read the book, I would still be satisfied. At the end of the day, I wrote this to prove to myself one last time that I can do it, to write a story that people would be interested in and might even want to know more about. But this isn't the end for Khan's Den. We have only just begun, because there are things in life that cannot be stopped. The flow of time, destiny, big dreams, a strong will. Without them, we cannot have real freedom. And now, the time has come for me to finally break free.